when it comes to the D2C brands, websites are super important, if not the most important part of your whole operation. I'm going to give you three simple to implement solutions that will make work go out a lot faster and reduce your stress levels massively. Different industries specialize on this almost exclusively. So if you're in tech or product, this is what they do. And we're going to be stealing solutions from them. I've been a developer now for 15 years, which is actually longer than I've not been a developer. Kind of crazy. I ran the website team for a 500 million direct to consumer UK brand and was also the CTO of a funded startup. So been in and around this space. Most D2C brands do not have good development systems. If your system looks like you messaging people multiple times a day to see where work is or they're messaging you, if developers keep releasing things which have obvious bugs in them and causing issues on the website, or flip side, you have a strenuous um, approval process where everything has to go through you. Number one, visibility. Having a very detailed flow of where all work is at all times so you can see everything. I'm gonna give a brief explanation and then I'm gonna show you a video of what I use for my developers. If nobody knows what anybody else is doing, you are the only one with oversight, which means you are the only one that can fix things. If you ever find yourself going, oh, am I the only one here that can think? Very strong indication that the information is not out there for other people to actually pick these things up and do them. I'm gonna show you what I use for my development teams. Okay, so this is a pretty standard setup for how you would handle dev tasks in, let's say, product development or technical projects. I'm using an old sprint, so I don't have loads of tasks and so I don't dox myself, but the way it works is you just wanna break down each different state that the work could be in at any one time, which is the whole visibility aspect. So when you start, tasks are in the backlog. As soon as they are ready for someone to take, you put them in to do. A developer will then take it. They could, You can manually assign things from here, but if anything that's in to do is available to be started, anyone can take whatever task they want. And as soon as they start working on it, they put it into in development. So this means that I, you know, instead of checking up and seeing oh, what tasks do we need to work on? What's happening? I can see what is being worked on and who's working on it. Once they finish with it, I ask them to put it in review. In review, then it's also like, you know, add a preview link to the Shopify theme that you're using. Maybe send a PR of the code and any comments or requests that you have. I will review it. And again, this is nice because instead of developers going, hey, can you check this? I, I just check whichever project we're looking at and everything will be in in review. I'll go through it. If everything's good, it moves to accepted and then deployed is later down the line. If I'm not happy with it, they've done something wrong, they've misunderstood the task or they've not tested it properly, I move it back to changes requested. And then they, instead of having to me message them and tell them what's going on, they can see anything in changes requested. Anything that's assigned to them, they don't even need to fix it. And then once they're done, it goes back to in review and that process just repeats. So the nice thing about it is... Um, you basically get a glance of the entire project at once. So if, oh, there's also blocked, which I, I just use in case, if there's something we need to do, but we can't work on it right now, I'll put it in blocked. And then it. I, I just sort of know it's a to-do for, for, for the admin team. But it just means you can get a glance of the whole project at all times. You can see what's being worked on, what's not being worked on. And there's also rarely uh, ever any clashes. So two people won't work on the same thing because if they need to pick up a task, they will see what is in to do and what is in development. So it, it just makes things really easy to manage. Now, the most important thing about the whole visibility aspect is not just when you assign the ticket to someone and you make the task, it's also people updating as they go. So if someone messages you, hey, I'm blocked on this thing, great, put it in the ticket. You need to be reinforcing this all the time. Someone messages you personally, you need to share it to the group chat. If you speak to someone, it's like, hey, where is this ticket at? And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm struggling because this. It's like, put it in the ticket and tag the person. You, you need to create a culture where people are just doing this all the time. The reason is then everyone else kind of pulls their resources and know where things are. No one's messaging you, hey, where is this at? You can look at the ticket, everything's there. Okay, number two, tying in directly to this is accountability. With knowing where every task is at all times, you also need to know who is assigned to that task at all times. This also helps a lot with priorities and for people to be empowered to think when you're not there. A lot of this is expectation setting and reinforcement. When you're onboarding the devs, I like to actually give them a video explaining how the dev process works and ask them to move a ticket. If I check up with them, I'm like, hey, have you managed to do this ticket? And they go, yeah, it's ready for testing. It's like, okay, you need to move it to the next place and you need to put the, you know, a preview link or something like that in the ticket. When you have these processes, it gets a lot easier for work to be done when you're not there. I've seen the difference when bringing on developers, you telling them the stringent process and sort of just leaving them to figure it out. 
The difference is developers that don't get told about the process always give me negative surprises. The developers that are told about the process sometimes give me positive surprises. So for example, developers that know how to move the system, sometimes I'll assign a task and you know it, it's late in their time zone. So I think, oh, okay, I'll, I'll get to them. I'll message them tomorrow to pick up the ticket. I go to sleep, I wake up the next day and they've already done it because they know this, the way the system works. They've already moved it over and I can just look at the board. I know who's responsible for what and what's been done. Developers that don't have that, the only time they really get in touch with me is because they need help with something. So it, it massively changes the difference between what they can do on their own. Third and final is a QA process. QA stands for quality assurance, industry standard in other fields. What this means is you have an acceptance criteria. So when you assign the work, you basically set the expectations of what it needs to be like when it gets deployed. And you also have a testing checklist so that anytime someone's gonna release code to the website, they have to check that the, the cart drawer opens, the PDP add to cart works. You think of the worst bugs that happened in the last quarter, whether that's like, you know, the PDP wasn't working, the checkout was down, whatever made your heart drop the most, you make a list of these things. So can someone add the cart from the PDP on the cart drawer? You put these down as a list and every time someone deploys work to the main code base, you have them check that list. If they don't, it's fantastic because you can actually bring up and say, you've not done this, do it properly. And it's a lot easier for the developers to actually go through and check things. It will be a terrible list at first. You're gonna miss loads of things, that's fine. But it's better than no list. And if you're already doing this process, you have it in your head, you just need to document it. As you go, anytime a new bug comes up, you just add it to the list. The list will get huge. You then might have to think, oh, I can't test all of these 200 items every time we do a deployment. Maybe you split it out into smaller segments. So, you know, the, the mission critical stuff, such as checkout, you do that every time a deployment. But then something like the journals or the footer, you do once a week but you, you have some sort of cadence behind quality. I'm gonna tell you as a developer myself, I, I don't know what happens, but if you're building the thing, you for some reason have these blockers on. So you don't notice the obvious things that someone else will. It's always good to run it by someone else. And if you have a process, it makes it a lot easier. This probably does sound time consuming, but if you have a very specific stringent list of QA responsibilities, you don't necessarily have to do that. You could give that to a designer or if it's super simple, you could even hire a VA. So I hope that was helpful. They are three simple steps. Um, they're, they're always moving targets, right? Like it's stuff that I still have to work on as well. I'm always thinking like, you know, oh, why is, is this not being done? We're probably just not setting expectations properly. We're probably not making things clear enough. If we are making it clear and they're not doing it, that's a separate argument, but you know, maybe another video. I hope that was useful. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the development process in D2C, anything with Shopify, I'm your guy, hit me up, love to hear.